So in front of me on the table today, I have a selection of Wi-Fi routers. On my right here, I have two of Starlink's routers. These are the routers that are included in the kit when you buy Starlink. And one of the most common questions that I see from new Starlink customers is, is the Wi-Fi router that's included any good? Can I get more internet speeds, more performance and more features out of a third party router like this one right here? So today in this video, that's what we're gonna be talking about. I'm gonna be showing you how fast the Starlink router is compared to an aftermarket router like this Eero uh, mesh unit right here. And I'm also gonna be taking a look at some of the features that you might be missing out on if you're using one of the Starlink routers versus an aftermarket unit. So if you've been thinking about upgrading the Starlink router to an aftermarket unit for more features or performance, this video is for you. We're gonna be taking a look at all that, so let's jump right in. So I think people have two main concerns when it comes to Starlink router versus a third-party router. That's speed and features. Now, right off the top of the video, I can say to you that third-party routers, aftermarket stuff like this Eero and this Peplink router definitely have way more features for networking, parental controls, device controls, et cetera. There's no question about that. The Starlink routers are a pretty basic router when it comes to their configuration. You can't do things like port forwarding. Uh, they don't even have an option for guest networks at the time of this video. So if you need some of those more advanced networking features, I'll save you a bunch of time. You don't even have to watch the rest of the video. You definitely wanna go with a third party router. This Eero mesh unit that I have right here, it has a ton of options. You know, you can configure network profiles that you know, limit bandwidth, limit data for certain devices versus others. Uh, you can add mesh units, you can expand coverage that way. There's just a ton of different networking options that you can do if you need more advanced features. Uh, stuff that just simply isn't available on the Starlink router. So this video really is just gonna be focusing on Wi-Fi performance and internet speeds. The question that I really want to answer and dive into for this test and this video is, can I get more internet speeds from a third party router versus the default Starlink router? That's what I'm gonna be showing you in today's test, today's video. How I'm gonna do this is basically I'm gonna hook up my own Starlink Gen 3 router to my residential dish that's installed on my roof. And I'm gonna be running a few speed tests. I'm gonna be running some speed tests right next to the router to give you an idea of like the ideal internet performance that you get over Wi-Fi. And then I'm gonna be running kind of an extreme range test example. So I'm gonna go outside actually and go about 80 to 100 feet away from uh, where this router is installed indoors. And I'm gonna do a test from where I think the limit of the range of this router would be. And that's gonna show us how much the speed degrades as you get further away from the router. And that's a good test of range. So I'm gonna be doing the same test with the Eero Pro 6E unit right here and we're gonna be comparing them side by side. So the test is really going to help us discover if I buy this Eero Pro 6E, is that gonna increase my internet speeds that I get from Starlink? So let's jump right in. Let's start by testing the Starlink Gen 3 router first. This is my Starlink Gen 3 router. It's hooked up to my residential dish that's mounted on my roof. Uh, I use this basically full time for my home internet. So let's run a speed test using the Starlink app and just get a baseline here of what the Gen 3 router that comes with every Starlink kit is capable of, you know, out of the box. Um, I'm gonna be doing the test with the phone right here, right next to it. This is, the first part of this test here is like under ideal conditions, so not limited at all by the Wi-Fi signal. Um, and then I'm gonna be going further away to test the speeds at a further range. So let's go ahead and run the speed test in the app, see what we can get. I'll run a couple tests and just take the top result from that test. So it looks like we are at about 156 megabits per second down, and we'll just wait on the upload here. Latency, we have 26 milliseconds, and finally the upload is in 6.3 megabits per second up. Um, I'll run that a couple more times just to make sure that I'm not getting a fluke or anything. Uh, really, at this time of day, we're, we're not in peak hours. It's about nine o'clock in the morning. So we're not running into peak hour congestion or anything. As our second test finishes here, we get 89 megabits per second down. 
and we're at around 25 megabits per second up. Same latency. Let's run that one more time and see what we get here. So kind of similar to the first test there. Uh, these are normal speeds for my area. It's gonna depend a lot on your area, the time of day, what service plane you have, what equipment you have, that sort of thing. So these speeds right here in the 100 to 150 range down are normal. So I'm this is an expected result for me as our third test here, 145 megabits per second down, 14.9 megabits per second up, and 42 milliseconds of latency. So now we'll try a test further away just to see how much speed drops off as the Wi-Fi range is weaker. I'm outside in my fire pit area now. And the reason I'm here is to test the kind of extreme range of the Starlink Gen 3 router. So right now the signal is having to go through a basement wall, closed doors, that sort of thing. And then I'm probably about 80 feet overall away from the router. So not ideal conditions for a wireless connection. And I wanted to do this to show you just how much signal causes your internet speed to drop off. So if I run a speed test now, you're gonna notice a lot lower speeds here on my device. As you can see, we're just getting a little over 10 megabits per second right now. So the final result here, 14.3 megabits per second down, 56 milliseconds latency, so a little bit higher latency as well, and then 13.2 megabits per second on the upload. And I wanted to test out here because a lot of you have security cameras and you're using devices outside of your home. So overall range at distances like this is important, even though you could you know, extend range with an outdoor Wi-Fi repeater or mesh or whatever. Uh, but I think a lot of you are interested to know, you know, can I improve my range by getting a different router? And so that's really what I'm looking at. So not ideal conditions that I'm testing in right now or my network setup, but I wanted to test the far range abilities of the Gen 3 router and the Eero router. So now let's hook up our Eero Pro 6E router. To do that, you're gonna need to go to your Starlink Gen 3 router. On the back, there's a cover that you take off and that exposes two ethernet ports. You're gonna take your ethernet cable. Usually these come with the third-party router that you buy and you plug it into either one of those two ports, doesn't matter. And then from there, you just plug this into your third party router. On the Eero, we have two ports on the back here. We have one that's rated for 2.5 uh, gigabits per second, and then one is a one gigabit per second. So we're gonna choose the 2.5. Doesn't really matter though. And then there's a power cord as well. So I'm gonna plug that in. And then while that's booting up on the Eero side, what you have to do on the Starlink side is put the Gen 3 router into bypass mode. So just a little explanation here about bypass mode. The Starlink router is the, the power supply basically for the dish itself. So you can't just completely remove the Starlink Gen 3 router from the system. That's why we have to hook it up in this configuration here because the dish is still gonna be connected to the Starlink Gen 3 router, and it's gonna to continue to send power to it over this cable. What we're doing here with bypass mode is basically disabling the Wi-Fi radios and all the other routing and networking functions of the Starlink Gen 3 router so that our Eero can take over and do everything. To turn on bypass mode, you just go into the Starlink app and you will go to settings, go to your router settings, and then go down to the bottom here where it says bypass mode. And it's gonna give you a little warning here explaining about what bypass mode is, but you can slide to turn on bypass mode. It's gonna ask you once again, are you sure? And then once you have that turned on, your Wi-Fi network that you were connected to with Starlink is going to disappear. So I'm just gonna actually exit out of the app altogether because now, the Starlink app no longer controls any of the routing functions. You no longer have any routing options now that you're in bypass mode. All, it, all it's doing is passing internet through this ethernet port to our Eero. 
So now I have to manage all my Wi-Fi settings through the Eero app. And I've already done that. I preset everything up. I've created a, you know, just a basic Wi-Fi network with all the default settings in the Eero app. So now I'm ready to do a speed test once this finishes booting up. We're now connected to the Eero Pro 6E Wi-Fi network that I created. And I wanted to show you something pretty important. So you can actually still use the Starlink app, even though you're using a third party router and your Starlink router is in bypass mode. But what you'll notice is that there's no longer a router showing up here. And that's because we don't have a router to manage because we've got it in bypass mode. And you can also see that under the network here, that is showing network unavailable. Again, because the network management has been disabled on the Starlink router, we have to do everything through the Eero app if we're using a third party router. But we can still use all of the Starlink dish settings. So if we go here in the settings, you can see I still have things like snow melt, sleep schedule, uh, reset obstruction maps. You can see my obstruction tool is still working fine. So I wanted to point that out because that's another common question that I get is will I have to you know, use the Eero app? How do I manage my Starlink? How do I use the app if, I, if I'm using a third party router? Well, there's your answer. You can still use the Starlink app. And that includes a speed test as well. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. We're gonna go ahead and run a few speed tests just like we did with the Starlink router just to see if there's any major difference. Okay, so right off the bat, we're going up to about 180 something megabits per second. So slightly higher uh, as it finishes here with 199 megabits per second download. And it looks like we're at around 10 or 11 upload right now with 23 milliseconds latency. If you remember, our best test from the Gen 3 router was around 145 or so megabits per second. Second test here coming up at 295 megabits per second and upload slightly higher this time, similar latency at 26 milliseconds and then waiting on the upload here, about 12 megabits per second. And let's run it just a third time and now we're experiencing more of more along the same results here as what we did the first time around, uh, around 200 megabits per second and similar upload and latency as the other tests. So now let's go back outside to the fire pit area to simulate, you know, extreme range kind of situation to see if actually we can get improved speeds at a distance as well. Okay, back out here in the same place at the fire pit, again, around 80 or so feet away from the router through a concrete basement wall. So not ideal as far as Wi-Fi range goes, but that's the point. Uh, let's go back to our speed test and see what we can get. So a lot better results than the Starlink Gen 3 router. Um, we're at, oh, 116 megabits per second down. Looks like around 12 megabits per second up with 26 milliseconds this time latency. Uh, I did notice with the uh, Gen 3 router that we were running with Starlink in this same test, the latency was a little bit higher. I think it was around 50 milliseconds. So obviously now as I'm running a second speed test here, just to make sure it's not a fluke, uh, 67 megabits per second down and around 13 megabits per second uploads. So I think it's pretty clear that we're seeing that the Eero Pro 6E has definitely a little bit higher range potential, definitely more performance at a further away range, which is an important consideration if you've got a larger area that you're trying to cover with a single router. So let's talk through those results a little bit. So with the Gen 3 router, I think they made some massive improvements with this over the outgoing Generation 2 router. I actually got this Eero system back when I still had my Gen 2 running. And the reason that I got this is because the previous routers from Starlink were so bad. They used Wi-Fi 5 technology and the range and the speed on them just wasn't great at all. So my summary here is that if you have an older Starlink router from the Generation 1 or Generation 2 units, I think you definitely need to upgrade your router whether it's a Starlink Gen 3 router or something like this Amazon Eero 
Pro 6E. The performance you get from newer routers, whether it's you know the Starlink one or the Eero, they have Wi-Fi 6 and above chipsets, and that's just much better in terms of range and Wi-Fi transfer speeds versus the older Wi-Fi 5 technology. So bottom line there is if you have an older router, I definitely recommend you upgrading to something, even if it's just the Starlink, the newest Starlink Gen 3 router, which is $199 right now. And you can use this router actually with older Starlink systems. So they made it backwards compatible. Um, I'll put a link in the description below to an article on how that works. Um, we wrote up a guide for that. So I'll, I'll put that in the link below. But if this is the router that you have right now, you have a Gen 3 router, upgrading, you know, is it worth it? I, I think that we saw in the test that the internet speeds were a little bit faster with the Eero Pro 6E, but in my opinion, still well within the margin of error of just internet speed testing in general. So a really important caveat here to know is that you know, internet speed testing is, is not a science. It's just a spot check of what the internet speed is from your Starlink dish to a remote server somewhere else in the world at that time. And things can change rapidly. You know, you run a test, you know, now, and then five minutes from now, you could get two completely different results. And that is no indication that one router is, is necessarily better than the other. But the one thing that I did note with Eero and what I will say is that the range seems to be better on the Eero Pro 6E. You saw in my fire pit testing where I was, you know, a good distance away from this router, I got much better speeds at that distance than I did with the Starlink Gen 3 router. So I think for those of you with this Gen 3 router and you're just getting a brand new Starlink kit, I think if range is, is an important consideration for you, like if you have an outbuilding or detached garage, or you'd like to be outside like in a fire pit like I was, I think definitely consider upgrading to something with better range. The Gen 3 router is great as a, you know, a starter unit. You know, they, Starlink says it can cover up to about 3,200 square feet of space. So perfect as a single unit for most homes. But if you're after that increased performance, definitely look to upgrade to something third party. And like I had already mentioned in the beginning of the video, third party is your only real option if you need more of those advanced networking features because the Starlink router simply doesn't have it. If you're interested in checking out the Amazon Eero Pro 6E, I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, this is just the one that I personally used with my Gen 2 system, so that's what I'm familiar with and that's what I can recommend. But honestly, there are a ton of good options out there if you're looking at third-party routers. Really, anything with Wi-Fi 6 and above is what you're looking for. And if you're interested in a mesh system, I would recommend getting something with tri-band radios. Um, the, the Starlink Gen 3 router, by the way, Wi-Fi 6, and it also has tri-band uh, mesh radios as well. So pretty decent router, but if you're interested in more of those features and improved range and overall Wi-Fi performance, then definitely recommend a third-party router such as this Eero. If you have any questions about using a third-party router with Starlink or you need specific recommendations on what router would be good for your situation, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to help you out. As always, thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys supporting the channel. We'll see you in the next video.